Hi guys, it's Les here over in West Yorkshire at The Rock Room. Uh, what I'm looking at today is actually a slightly larger, well it's quite a bit larger, rock tumbler. Now the difficulty with the normal size rock tumblers, the ones that you see everywhere, you know, the CR1, CR2, that sort of thing, is that the actual barrels are only this kind of size, and I'm going to come forward just to show you this. They're only that kind of size, so, so if you've got any large pebbles or a large batch, you've either got to put a couple on, or if you've got a large pebbles, you ain't going to be able to do it in that, because they've got nowhere to turn. So, I've upgraded to one of these. Now, unfortunately, the CR2 hasn't come yet, um, so I can't show you that one yet, but I will do as soon as it comes. This one, though, is the Beach Lapidary, and that's the name of a company, Beach Lapidary, and it's B-E-A-C-H. It's a UK-based company, and it's one of the oldest companies in the country manufacturing lapidary machines, tumblers and saws and things. Now, this particular machine has a £5 capacity drum. The normal one is a £3 or a one and a half. This one is a £5. Uh, but you can see with the diameter of it, there's room in there to put some pretty large rocks and pebbles so that there's room for them to move, or a large volume. Just put that back there a second. So, the machine itself has got an on-off switch, which is nice because it might sound strange that I'm saying it, which is nice. A lot of these machines don't have an on-off switch. You just literally plug it in and it starts, which is not something that I appreciate because you don't always buy the plug. Oh yeah, you know, you sometimes you're over there and you've got an extension, so you plug it in over there and it's already good by the time you get back. It's nice to be able to just flick it on and off. Uh, so it might sound silly, but that's the, uh, the truth of the matter. This is probably the only company I know that puts them on. <laughs> Um, I'll move this machine over here so we can get a closer look at it anyway. Move it around with coffee. I've got to have your coffee. Right, so let's have a look on, on this camera to see if it's any better for you. Alright, so that's the machine itself. As you can see, it's a, a blue, it's a lovely blue shade. British gas blue, I would think. It's a metal construction. Now this is a very sturdy metal. This is not your cheap tin. You can hear it. It's a solid sheet metal. And it's got the coating that's on it is a little bit like uh, enamel. I would say it is an enamel paint. Uh, so it's going to be very hard wearing. And it's got a fi finish on it that's slightly hammered. A little bit like hammerite paint. Uh, underneath, all we've got is air vents. To let air in, you can see the uh, the motorised shaft and the uh, slave shaft, if you like. We've got rubber feet. Interestingly, we've only got three feet, so it's a little bit like a three wheeler. I don't understand that, but <laughs> nevertheless, that's what we've got. Is three sticker telling you all about the manufacturer. Uh, and then on the top, what you can see here, these are guide wheels, and it's to keep basically a barrel centred. And they will roll up the barrel. You know, it's free flowing, is that? Uh, the weight of it, as it is empty, is about five kilos. Uh, it's 240 volts. I believe that the shafts run at 60 RPM or thereabouts. Now, I have actually um, contacted, reached out to Beach Lapidary twice this last week uh, to ask them for the specifications on this, you know, wattage and stuff like that, but they haven't got back to me, so I can't actually tell you any of that. All I can really tell you is it's 240 volts. Um, I have gleaned other websites uh, and found that they, somebody says it's a 60 RPM, but again, I can't, I can't verify that. Um, the price of these, well, the price of these is quite variable, to be honest. I've seen them as low as £162, up to as high as £234, and there's links in the description. Uh, where you can get these things. So, uh, so you know, it, it's, it's not a very competitive market, it seems, if there's that kind of uh, variation in price. I mean, it's a lot of money differences, that. And the prices I'm quoted are included in the standard rubber barrel. Uh, now, this is made out of rubber, and it's the kind of rubber that you would find in tyres. It's, it's uh, absolutely rock-solid rubber. So that should make it a very quiet machine to run. So let's just plug it in here and see what happens. Now, as you can see, we've got one motorised wheel, 
which is that one. And we've got one that's not spinning, and that's because this is like a slave. As this one turns your rubber barrel, it turns this one as well. On the end of this barrel, on the end of this shaft, sorry, you'll notice, you might not be able to see it, but it's, it's knurled there, and it's knurled here, and that's to grab a hold of your barrel. So basically what you have to do with this machine, you don't load your bricks in straight away, your stones, and then just chuck it on and fire it up. You're going to let it run for a while, with no load, to warm up the engine. So that's what we're doing at the minute. I'll just switch it off though, because it's a little bit annoying at the sec. So I'm going to show you the barrel. So this is your barrel, quite a bit different to the normal sized one, as you can see. Uh, the diameter of this, I think, is 14 centimetres. So, as you can see, that's the difference, look. So, to get into this one, what you have to do, there's a rubber ring that goes all the way around a recessed lip. See here? And you have to either pull that off, or you can just roll it down the shaft if, if you want. And then, this lid is held in by a flap, if you see. There, you have to pull that back to access it. You see that? It's difficult to show on camera because you can, I've got, I ain't got that many fingers. But that's basically what you do. You pull, fold that back a little bit and get your fingers under. And off she pops. And that's your barrel look. And that's your lid. Just to prove it's made out of rubber. Just. It's all rubber and it smells just like a brand new tyre. <laughs> so, as far as the quantity of rocks that we can put in this, it's a five pound capacity drum is this. So, just out of interest, let's have a look at some rocks. Well, I'm going to be doing another video after this, which will, this is the beginning of the other video incidentally. Because uh, I've basically shown you the uh, the actual device itself, so that's that's that video shown, isn't it? All I'm going to show you now is how many rocks we can get in. So I've got some tiger's eye. Now tiger's eye is, uh, I think it's five and a half, six on the most scales. So it's quite soft really, so I'm going to be limited to what I can tumble with it. Uh, otherwise I'm just going to smash it to bits. But I think I've got enough to fill this barrel. So I'm just going to test that now. more or less perfect in there. You're looking to you're looking to get this barrel about two thirds full. Now I think I might be able to get a bit more in there. Just have to have some red tiger's eye as well so we're gonna stick that in. Right. So that's what we've got look. That's up to about there in rock. You see that up to about there in rock. So what I'm gonna do now on top of that I'm going to put some grits in it and the grits I'm going to use I'm going to start off with 80 grit which is pretty coarse material this is the stuff that you would find stuck to sandpaper <laughs> now for for this amount of rocks and there's about three and a bit pound in there I'm actually going to use five tablespoons of grit but because as usual I can't find my spoon I'm going to have to use my lid so, I'm going to call that a tablespoon. Let's level the lid. Alright, I'm going to call that five tablespoons and a little bit for the sand bump. Right, the other thing I'm going to put in there, and this is not, not required, it's just all I have to do, is I'm going to put a little bit of borax in there. Like that. Perhaps a couple of tablespoons. And what that's going to do is it's going to make the uh, liquid that we're putting in there more, more viscous, and that's going to make it the grit stick to the stones. So as soon as the touch stones touch each other, they're going to start grinding straight off, because they're going to be basically cultured in it like jam. That's the idea anyway. So I'll just put some water in and show you how much you need. 
So that's how much water I've got. Hopefully you can see that's just below the level of the rocks. You see that? You don't want too much water in there, but you want enough so that it sloshes a little bit. You see that? Oh, that's my phone. And really all we've got to do now is uh, seal this barrel and uh, we can start tumbling. Now I'm going to turn this on, this on just so it gets a little bit warmed up so it's going to get a little bit noisier. Not too much is it? Really? Now to get this back in you have to line it up the best you can and then basically just push it level with the top. Make sure it's nice and level. Give it a squeeze all the way around. Now, I'll show you this. You can see the top of that. Not this, forget this, this is where the, ra the rubber band's gonna go. This we're on about. This is perfectly level and flat. There's no bits stuck up and there's no bits depressed. So that's nice and stuck up. Now this is one of the piece I was telling you that's the most difficult part for me because you need an extra set of arms. And that's getting this plastic band on. So we we'll, we'll put it around there. This is the best way I've found. We'll put it around there. Stretch your fingers as wide as they'll go and roll it. <laughs> like that. There we go, we're on. <laughs> it's a little bit of a toe, but that seal is very important because that's actually the bit that makes this seal. Without that, it's probably going to leak. Now this machine does actually run a little bit warm. There is a, a notification that comes with the instructive manual that you get which you'll see here and um, which basically it will tell you that it runs this engine runs a little bit hot uh, so don't worry about that but you mustn't put it inside a cupboard or anything over top of it because it, it will overheat so i think we're, we're about running on that and what you've got to do you don't put your drum on when it stops and start it you put your drum on while it's already moving that's what we're going to do now Like so. And you can hear how quiet that is. Compared to the other one. I'll put the other one on just so you can hear it. That's the one that has a plastic barrel. And that's the difference between that and a rubber barrel. The only difficulty with that rubber barrel is the cost of it. Because to get a replacement rubber barrel you're looking at almost 60 pounds 60 pounds that's the price of a tire isn't it uh, the lid you can get a replacement lid for a fiver but the actual barrel body itself is the bit that cost in the money now there's a lot of tire in there like there's a lot of rubber it isn't very well made but 60 quid is an awful lot of money for a rubber barrel uh, these on the other hand these are about a tenner um, that to show you the difference but it's not just this brand, all the brands that use rubber barrels are all that kind of price range, very expensive things. It's probably part of the reason that it's never really took off in this country like it has in other countries, because getting the materials is so much more expensive. Um, well, I have found that I've managed to find a place that you can get this at £162, which is up to 80 and 90 pound cheaper than a lot of them so i've put that link in the in the menu for you if you're wanting one of these and now here's the thing here's the kicker this comes with a five-year guarantee right which is a long time for a modern piece of equipment isn't it you know mechanical equipment moving parts and that it's a long time there are bargains out there you don't have to pay full retail price for these things if you're wanting to have a go some of these toys could be rather expensive now Get yourself on eBay or one of the other selling sites and see what's available, but don't jump at the first one. You must start making a mental, if you wanted to get into it, start making a note, start watching them in your watch list, so that you get to know roughly what they're worth for second hand, you know, and what peak condition they're in at that price level. This is a big difference. Uh, so yeah, we're, uh, we're coming on nicely. I'm well impressed with the quality of that. I can't, I can't really get fault it enough. Only time is going to tell how well it does work, you know. If you bear in mind the other one, the CR2, the Evans one, I've had that for 45 years and it's still working. I've got a new Evans on, on order at the minute, but I don't, it has gone, but I don't know if the quality is the same as it used to be in 1975, I suspect probably not. 
Uh, the metal rare might be the same, but I suspect the components might be different. Don't know. Find out when it comes. But anyway, that's this. Nice and quiet. Out of the way. And I can feel, I can hear the rot in there. And I can feel it when I put my hand on the drum. It's because I'm feeling the bang, 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 bang. But I'm not hearing it. That, for me, is absolutely beautiful. Oh. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like I say, you can get these machines from £162. Up. Highly recommended. British made. Um, and that's about it. Give us a thumbs up for this video. Subscribe if you're to subscribe. And share the hell out of it. Let's get some people into this hobby. Let's try and get the prices down a little bit as well. You know what I mean? Anyway, for now, catch you later.